The European slave trade, also known as the transatlantic slave trade, involved the capture and transportation of millions of Africans to the Americas and Europe. During this horrific period, which took place between the 15th and 19th centuries, many African tribes and ethnic groups were affected. While it is difficult to provide an exhaustive list of African tribes taken across the Atlantic Ocean, here are the top 10 African tribes taken in the European slave trade. The Yoruba people, hailing from the region that spans present-day Nigeria, Bene, and Togo, had a significant and profound experience during the transatlantic slave trade. Their story is one of displacement, cultural resilience, and the enduring impact of a dark chapter in history. The Yoruba were targeted by European slave traders through raids, warfare, and kidnapping. Individuals and families were forcibly captured and taken to coastal slave markets, where they became commodities for the transatlantic slave trade. The Yoruba, known for their rich cultural heritage and sophisticated societies, faced the brutal reality of being uprooted from their homeland. The Yoruba, along with other captured Africans, endured the dehumanizing Middle Passage across the Atlantic. Packed into overcrowded and unsanitary slave ships, they faced unimaginable hardships including disease, malnutrition, and violence. Many did not survive the perilous journey, succumbing to the harsh conditions imposed upon them. Upon reaching the Americas, Yoruba captives were thrust into a new and alien environment. They were forced into labor on plantations, working on crops such as sugar, tobacco, and cotton. The Yoruba, known for their agricultural expertise and urban centers in their homeland, were now subjected to grueling plantation life, contributing to the economic prosperity of the colonies through their forced labor. Despite the harsh circumstances, the Yoruba people demonstrated resilience in preserving aspects of their cultural identity. They infused their music, dance, and religious practices into the fabric of their daily lives, creating syncretic traditions that blended African and New World influences. Elements of Yoruba religion, such as Orisha worship, found expression in various forms in the Americas, particularly in regions with a significant Yoruba diaspora such as Brazil, Cuba, Trinidad and Tobago, and other parts of the Americas. The Igbo people, indigenous to southeastern Nigeria, were among those captured by European slave traders, often through raids, warfare or kidnapping. Families were torn apart as individuals were seized and marched to coastal slave markets. The Igbo were known for their resistance to enslavement and their spirited attempts to retain their freedom sometimes led to violent conflicts with European slavers. The captured Igbo, like the Yoruba, endured the harrowing Middle Passage across the Atlantic. Packed into tightly confined and unsanitary conditions on slave ships, they faced brutal treatment, disease, and high mortality rates. Many did not survive the grueling journey, succumbing to sickness, malnutrition, and inhumane conditions. Upon arrival in the Americas, the surviving Igbo slaves faced the harsh reality of plantation life. They were subjected to forced labor on plantations, working in brutal conditions on sugar, tobacco, cotton, and other crops. The Igbo people, known for their agricultural practices in their homeland, were often forced to toil in unfamiliar and demanding environments. 
The transatlantic slave trade disrupted the rich cultural fabric of the Igbo society. Families were separated, traditional practices were suppressed, and the communal bonds that defined Igbo life were fractured. The trauma of the experience left an indelible mark on the cultural identity of the Igbo people. Despite the immense challenges, the Igbo people displayed resilience and resistance. They maintained aspects of their cultural heritage through music, dance, and oral traditions. Some were able to preserve elements of their language and religious beliefs, adapting them to the new circumstances they faced in the Americas. The legacy of the transatlantic slave trade is still felt among the Igbo people and their descendants today. The diaspora communities in the Americas, particularly in countries like the United States, Brazil and the Caribbean, continue to grapple with the historical trauma and work towards preserving and revitalizing their cultural heritage. The Akan people, primarily residing in present-day Ghana and Ivory Coast, were deeply affected by the transatlantic slave trade. Their experience during this dark period in history was marked by immense suffering, loss, and the disruption of their society. The Akan people had a rich cultural heritage and were known for their advanced civilization, art, and trade networks. However, in the 15th century, European powers, predominantly the Portuguese, established contact with the Akan region, eventually leading to their involvement in the slave trade. The Akan people were captured by rival tribes and sold to European slave traders in exchange for goods such as firearms, textiles, and alcohol. The captives were then transported to coastal forts such as Elmina and Cape Coast Castle, where they were held in grim conditions before being loaded onto ships bound for the Americas and Europe. Once aboard the slave ships, the Akan people endured unimaginable suffering. They were crammed into the ship's halls, often chained and shackled with little space and inhumane conditions. Many Akan individuals died during the treacherous Middle Passage, succumbing to disease, malnutrition, and the brutality of the journey. Upon arrival in the Americas, the Akan people were subjected to further dehumanization. They were sold at slave auctions to plantation owners and forced into hard labor on sugar, tobacco, and cotton plantations. The Akan people were stripped of their names, languages, and cultural practices as they were forbidden from practicing their traditions and forced to adopt the customs of their captors. Despite the immense hardships, the Akan people resisted and preserved their cultural identity as best they could. They secretly maintained their traditional beliefs and customs, passing them down through oral traditions and covert gatherings. This resilience can still be seen today in the vibrant Akan culture that has managed to survive and thrive despite the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade. The Mandingo people, also known as the Mandinka or Malinke, were one of the many African ethnic groups that were deeply impacted by the transatlantic slave trade. Hailing from regions that span present-day Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Mali, and other West African countries, the Mandingo people had a rich history and cultural heritage that was marred by the horrors of slavery. The Mandingo people were highly respected for their trade skills agricultural practices, and their Islamic faith. However, their contact with European powers, particularly the Portuguese in the 15th century, marked the beginning of their involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Similar to other African tribes, the Mandingo people were captured by rival tribes or sold by opportunistic African intermediaries 
who sought to profit from the slave trade. They were often captured during raids or wars, and many were forcibly separated from their families and communities. Shackled and chained, the Mandingo captives were headed together and marched long distances to coastal slave forts such as Gory Island and St. Louis, where they awaited transport to the Americas. The conditions endured by the Mandingo people during the Middle Passage were deplorable. Packed tightly into the holds of the slave ships, they suffered from overcrowding, disease, malnutrition and the constant threat of violence from the ship's crew. Many perished during the treacherous journey across the Atlantic Ocean, their lives lost to the brutalities of the trade. Upon arrival in the Americas, the Mandingo people were subjected to further dehumanization but found ways to preserve their identity and resist their oppressors. They maintained their Islamic faith, often practicing it in secret and passed down their traditions through oral storytelling and clandestine community gatherings. These acts of resistance served as powerful reminders of their resilience and determination to retain their cultural identity. The Ibibio people are an ethnic group native to the southeastern region of Nigeria, particularly in the Akwa Ibom and Cross River states. They belong to the larger Niger Congo language family and are known for their rich cultural heritage, including traditional art, dance, and religious practices. The Ibibio people speak the Ibibio language. Regarding the transatlantic slave trade, specific figures on the number of Ibibio people taken into slavery are not readily available. The transatlantic slave trade involved the forced migration of millions of Africans, including individuals from various ethnic groups to the Americas over several centuries. The exact number of Ibibio people taken into slavery is challenging to determine due to the lack of comprehensive records from that period. However, it is important to note that the Ibibio people, like many other ethnic groups in West Africa, were adversely affected by the transatlantic slave trade. They faced the horrors of capture, enslavement, and the traumatic journey across the Atlantic. Families were often separated, communities were disrupted, and the social fabric of Ibibio society was profoundly impacted by the devastating consequences of the slave trade. The descendants of those who were taken into slavery form part of the African diaspora in the Americas, contributing to the diverse cultural landscape of regions such as the Caribbean, North America, and South America. who are primarily located in the region that encompasses parts of the present-day Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo, and Angola, had a complex relationship with the Portuguese during the age of exploration and the early phases of European colonization. They also suffered during the European transatlantic slave trade. Contact between the Congo Kingdom and the Portuguese dates back to the late 15th century. The Portuguese were among the first Europeans to establish direct contact with West and Central African societies, including the Congo Kingdom. This contact was facilitated by Portuguese explorers seeking new trade routes and economic opportunities. Initially, the relationship between the Congo Kingdom and the Portuguese was characterized by trade. The Congo people engaged in the exchange of goods including ivory, copper, and slaves with the Portuguese. The Congo Kingdom was a centralized and powerful state with a sophisticated political structure and they saw advantages in establishing economic ties with the Portuguese. 
There was also a degree of cultural and religious exchange between the Congo people and the Portuguese. Some Congo elites converted to Christianity and the Portuguese missionaries played a role in introducing Christianity to the region. This cultural and religious exchange, however, was not without tension and resistance as traditional Congo religious beliefs persisted alongside Christian practices. Over time, the relationship between the Congo Kingdom and the Portuguese became increasingly entwined with the transatlantic slave trade. The demand for slaves in the Americas led to the capture and export of Africans, including those from the Congo Kingdom. The slave trade had devastating effects on Congo society, leading to social disruption, economic decline, and political instability. The Ewe people, primarily located in the Volta region of Ghana, Togo, and parts of Bene, were among the various African ethnic groups affected by the transatlantic slave trade. The process of capturing and selling individuals into slavery was brutal. Many African communities, including the Ewe, were targeted through raids and warfare. Rival African groups or European slave traders often armed with superior weaponry, would attack villages, capture individuals, and sometimes entire communities. These raids were characterized by violence, destruction, and the capture of men, women, and children. The Ewe people lived in regions close to the coast, where European forts and trading posts were established. European powers, particularly the Portuguese, Dutch, English, and others constructed forts along the coast of West Africa. These forts became centers for the exchange of goods, including enslaved individuals. Africans, including the Ewe, were often traded to European slave traders in exchange for firearms, textiles, alcohol, and other commodities. Once captured, the Ewe and other enslaved individuals were packed into crowded and unsanitary conditions on slave ships. They endured harsh treatment, disease, and high mortality rates. Many did not survive the journey to the Americas. The transatlantic slave trade had a devastating impact on the Ewe people, as it did on numerous African ethnic groups. Families were torn apart, communities were disrupted, and the social fabric of societies was profoundly affected. The historical trauma of the slave trade continues to shape the cultural and social dynamics of the Ewe and other African diaspora communities today. The Fon people, who were part of the larger Aja ethnic group, were impacted by the transatlantic slave trade in several ways. The Fon people resided in the Kingdom of Dahomey, now the Republic of Benin, which was a major center of the international slave trade in the 18th and 19th centuries. The Fon kings of Dahomey played a significant role in the slave trade, profiting from the sale of enslaved individuals to European traders. The Fon people themselves were not exempt from the effects of the slave trade. While it is debated to what extent the Dahomey Kingdom enslaved its own people, it is known that they pursued human captives as a result of strategic aims against warring empires. The Fon people, like other ethnic groups in the region, experienced the devastating consequences of the slave trade, including forced displacement, loss of family members, and the disruption of their social and cultural fabric. The Fon people's involvement in the slave trade was not limited to being victims or captors. They also used their position as sea merchants to establish a monopoly on the slave trade, ensuring their dominance in the region. Additionally, the Fon people, along with other West African kingdoms, played a role in supplying African slaves to meet the demand from the West Indies sugar plantation. It is important to note 
that the impact of the transatlantic slave trade on the Fon people was not limited to economic and political aspects. The trade had profound social and cultural consequences as it disrupted traditional social structures and led to the loss of cultural practices and knowledge. Overall, the Fon people as part of the Kingdom of Dahomey were both participants and victims of the transatlantic slave trade. Their experiences highlight the complex dynamics and far-reaching effect of this historical period on African societies. The Wolof people, an ethnic group primarily residing in Senegal, the Gambia and Mauritania, were among the African tribes affected by the transatlantic slave trade. They were vulnerable to European slave traders and African intermediaries who engaged in the capture and enslavement of individuals. The process involved raids, kidnappings and wars where captives were taken to be sold into slavery. European colonial powers, including the Portuguese, Dutch, English and French, established trading posts along the Senegambian coast. These posts served as centers for the purchase of enslaved Africans, including the Wolof, who were then transported across the Atlantic. Once the enslaved Wolof individuals reached the Americas, particularly in the Caribbean and parts of North and South America, they were forced to work on plantations, in mines, and in domestic settings. Despite the harsh conditions of slavery, the Wolof people, like other African tribes, sought to retain elements of their cultural identity. This included language, religion, music, and other cultural practices. The retention of Wolof cultural elements in the Americas contributed to the rich tapestry of African diasporic cultures. The Fulani people were indeed captured during the European slave trade. The Fulani, also known as the Fula, were a prominent ethnic group in West Africa, particularly in regions such as Senegal, Guinea, Nigeria, and Cameroon. They were targeted by European slave traders and suffered the devastating consequences of enslavement. It is challenging to provide an exact number of how many Fulani people were captured during the European slave trade. The transatlantic slave trade involved the forced transportation of millions of Africans across the Atlantic Ocean and it affected various ethnic groups, including the Fulani. The exact number of Fulani captives is difficult to determine due to limited historical records and the vast scope of the slave trade. It is important to note that the experiences of enslaved Africans during the transatlantic slave trade were universally devastating. Enslaved individuals resisted their dehumanizing conditions through various means, including organizing rebellions, hunger strikes, and even choosing suicide over living in slavery. The suffering and resistance of those captured during the transatlantic slave trade were significant aspects of this dark period in history. One prominent Fulani who was captured and sold into slavery was Ayuba Suleiman Diallo, also known as Job Ben Solomon. He was a Muslim prince from today's West African country of Senegal who was kidnapped and trafficked to the Americas during the Atlantic slave trade, having previously owned and sold slaves himself. Now, let's have a recap. particular order, here are the top 10 African tribes taken in the European slave trade. 1. The Yoruba of Nigeria, 
Benin, and Togo. Two, the Igbo of Nigeria. Three, the Akan of Ghana and Ivory Coast. Four, the Mandingo of Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Mali, Sudan, and Egypt. Five, the Ibibio of Nigeria. Six, the Congo of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Congo, and Angola. Seven, the Ewe of Ghana, Togo, and Bene. Eight, the Fon of Bene. Nine, the Wolof of Senegal, the Gambia, and Mauritania. And ten, the Fulani of Senegal, Guinea, Nigeria, and Cameroon. It is important to note that the European slave trade impacted various African tribes and regions and the consequences of the trade were devastating. The slave trade disrupted African societies, caused depopulation and led to the loss of cultural heritage and traditions. The long-term effect of the European slave trade on African societies are still being felt till today. Are there other African tribes taken in the European slave trade that are not mentioned here? Do let us know in the comments. You can also check out our next episode on the 10 African royals who were taken in the Atlantic slave trade. Ruma, Ruma,